Hi, Robert. Thank you for speaking with Innovating Smart today. Uh, please tell us your full name, the name of your company, and the innovative thing that you're doing. And uh, tell us, it, as part of that, what is, um, what is the most compelling thing about what you're doing? Very good. Thank you. Uh, Robert Taylor is my name, and I'm with Sunflower Systems. And uh, for 15 years, we've been helping organizations keep track of their, what I call, stuff. Every organization has a lot of stuff. It has uh, an impact on the environment uh, because they have it. It's been produced. Uh, they have buildings. They have vehicles. They have computers. They have production equipment. All of this has an impact at some level on the environment. It uses, it uses power. It uses electricity. It uses natural resources. What is compelling to us is that we've been helping organizations keep track of all this stuff for other reasons for years, when all along they've, they've had the capability of being able to track it with the environmental sensitivities in mind. So from the time they procure it through the entire disposal process, they can keep track of these assets and look at the underlying impact that it makes on our environment and on the physical and natural resources that it takes over time. Wow, so you get right in there into the asset management issue that is already part of people's operations and add this ability to manage those assets from an environmental impact perspective. That's exactly correct. And because we've got this data, and the, and the thing that we do that is unique is that we're capturing data over time. So we start getting a timeline of data so we can trend things. And what people need to look at now is their energy consumption. They want to look at it in trends. They don't want to look at it from a baseline. They want to look at it from, okay, we started here, and how did we get there? And what are the things that we did along the way to make the improvements? We can pinpoint that, and then they can take this information and start doing what-if scenarios and forecasting. And it's going to be a very powerful tool for people to use over time. Excellent. What is your next big goal, Robert? I think the next big goal that we have is to get all of the interconnections established between the places where we can get data. Um, you know, talking with these uh, smart meter vendors, for instance, mm -hmm. they are beginning to get to the part where they can collect a lot of information about devices that are impacting the meters and the electronic signatures. Well, we can take that information and if we can pull that in from these smart meter vendors, from the utilities companies, from the things that that we can capture electronically off the smart grid with what is going on, we can now use that against that individual item, that asset we're tracking, and begin to be get even more real-time information about that that's going to enable us to become more conscious about the impact that these devices, these, these assets have um, on our overall energy efficiency. So you're actually integrating the smart grid to the device assets that it powers. Ultimately, that's where we need to go. There's a lot of innovation that needs to happen between now and then, but the same way that we can capture data from systems internally, and a lot of the data that we do use is captured by other systems internally. Finance systems, purchasing systems, accessing systems, perhaps maintenance management systems where they're doing ongoing events. All this information needs to be captured. What, what the next thing that's going to be great is when we can go outside of our own world and capture it from other places, which would be utilities and water usage and the different types of, of information that we can gather that comes from the result of all this other innovation that's going on in the smart grid right now, which is a very unique and, and a new network that is going to uh, catch a lot of people by surprise in terms of its, its, its ability to provide information and accessibility across the, uh, the entire component of energy usage. Now, you've um, largely answered this question already, but you might have a little more to say. What is the um, systems integration challenge that you're facing specifically? Like, like um, what, is the, what are the sort of obstacles that you face on this integration journey? Well, there are, there are a lot of obstacles. I think that the biggest obstacle is that there is no standard way for sending data. And I think that, that, that there are a lot of initiatives that are being looked at by people. Nothing, I, I'm not aware of many formal initiatives, but there are standards that are coming out for how data is, is sent back and forth um, in various ways that we can get it. Um, 
Having said that, the technologies allow us to capture data from a variety of different sources, but there are no standards for us, for instance, to say how we're going to capture data off of a, off of a smart meter. Um, there are standards that are going to place on the smart grid for sending information back and forth, but those are an evolving process. So I think the biggest challenge is just getting the standards up to, up to the, the, the point where all the different players that are out there that have data and that can benefit by the sharing of data can't do it in a consistent fashion. Right now, it's it's primarily having to be done in a one-off fashion, um, but we are we are really looking forward to being able to get that in a standardized fashion where we can share information bilaterally for the for the betterment of our of our asset management initiatives that we have. Yes. My final question for you, Robert, is um, what advice do you have for other innovators? It takes a lot longer than you think. I think the biggest advice is that even with the best idea, it takes a while to percolate, to, 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 to simmer, um, to get a little bit of traction. And you have to be able to move your vision because as you're out talking to people, your vision is going to change and, and your end point is going to be different because we all come out with these great ideas and we think it's great, but we haven't talked necessarily to the one person yet that's going to rock us off our axis a little bit to be able to say, we need to look at this a little, little bit more in depth and maybe from a different uh, set of lenses that we need to look at. So if, you, if you're trying to come into this and be, be uh, incredibly successful overnight, it never works that way. There's no such thing as an <laughs> overnight sensation as, as, as Malcolm Gladwell said. You've got to put your 10,000 hours in at, right. at some point. So it's, it's put your 10,000 hours in, but stay focused, don't give up. And it always takes longer than you think it is. But when, it, when the rewards come, they're worth it, definitely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for talking with us today. My pleasure.